Hey, what's going on, guys? I'm Jason Park with the Hypertube Podcast, and I'm here with Jifa Mallet, and he's a filmmaker, and he's going to talk about his first feature film, The Remedy for a Broken Heart. Jifa, how are you doing, good sir? Man, I'm blessed. I'm blessed, happy to be alive, and I'm grateful to be here with you talking about my film. Uh, I'm, I'm grateful for the opportunity, man. Thank you for reaching out to me. Yeah, absolutely, man. You know, I, I saw you... Um... You posted your film on Facebook, and I'm kind of a part of part of all the groups and all that stuff. And I was like, man, the the feeling it ha that you have to to complete your first feature and have it out into the world. What is that like for you, man? Because because I want to live through you right now. Man, it's <laughs> it's hard to put in words because it's like it's like it's hit me, but it's, it feels like it still hasn't hit me. Because like sometimes I just like out of nowhere. Bro, I cannot believe I just made my first feature film, bro. Like, I made a whole movie. Like, that'll happen, like, randomly at least, like, yeah. two or three times out the week. And uh, it's, it's, a, it's a great feeling, man. Like, especially going through the things I went through, coming from where I come from. Uh, it's <sighs> just, just the whole thing going on with family, the thing that's going on with family right now. It's, it's, it's I'll say it's bittersweet. I'll put it like that. It's a bittersweet feeling. So and I'm 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 grateful. Where were you, man? Like like you know, everyone has a memory of where they were when they decided that they were going to go and make their first film. Where were you and what were you doing when you were like, "Man, I'm going to go make a movie." So so this film is based off my uh, short film uh, called The Giver that's on YouTube right now. And I was actually in the car when I decided, hey, I want to make my own film. I want to make my own film. And uh, that started off, I was like, you know what? I'm going to reach out to this lady that's a writer and director because I don't know nothing about writing. I don't know nothing about directing. Mm -hmm. And uh, she gave me a fee. And I was like, okay, cool. I'm going to save up and I'm going to pay that fee. It started taking too long for me to save up to get there. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to just write and direct it myself. After mm -hmm. three drafts, I got to the giver, what, what that product is right now on YouTube. It's a 23-minute uh, film. And, uh, you know, I had a premiere for it, rented out a theater, had about 60, 65 people there. And uh, the reception was great. I got some great constructive uh, criticism and feedback to get better. And uh, everybody's like, part two, part two, what happened with this? What happened with that? I want to see this and that. And then basically I got to the conclusion, I'm going to have to make this whole thing over and make it into a full feature film. And that's when I started writing The Remedy for a Broken Heart. And here we are. <laughs> so, you know, it, it's, it's very interesting, right? So you have this moment where you're almost forced to go and make your own film, right? You're sitting there, you got the fee, you're saving up, your intention is, hey, I'm gonna hire this person. And then you're like, you know what? That's taking too long. Let me take my destiny into my own hands and get this done. So you started with that, that short film, that led into your feature, you wrote that. So what was that like? You finished the script, then what? Man, so it's crazy, cause I was in the middle of filming this other uh, movie uh, while I was writing that also. So I, so while I'm on set, you know, kind of going through the script and stuff, we have downtime or whatever, I'm still writing, you know, my script, my personal script. I'm filming somebody else's project and I'm writing my own script for my movie. But uh, what was it like? Uh, can you re repeat that last part? I'm sorry, I'll start so, rambling. Yeah, no worries, man. So like, you know, you finish the script and then what? Like, okay, you got your short film, you read it out of theater, the script is done. You're sitting there. It's the end. How do you start? So what I do is, what I had to do is, um, I had to first find, okay, who's going to be my camera person? I, you have to, I went out, me, like, who's who's going to be my crew? And I went with this guy that I had worked with on this uh, this other web series that I was in. And I reached out to him. He gave me his price. I was like, all right, cool. And then he had uh, another guy working with him that was, you know, did the audio lighting and stuff like that. I'm like, okay, cool. I got a good team. They, they work well with each other, work pretty quick and stuff like that. Next, I go to casting. Um, one of the, the, the lady that played Raven in my film, uh, she was in The Giver. She was in my film. She played the same character. And I reached out to her. I was like, hey, would you be cool being in my feature film? Are you okay with this pay amount per day? She was like, yeah, 
okay, cool, we got that. And then I had to find a new Imani, um, and I found her on Backstage. And then everybody else, I pretty much found them on Facebook. I put a lot of my family members in the film as well. They had little cameos and stuff like that. And um, a lot of other people, you know, I just casted, you know, just putting out casting calls on Facebook and stuff like that. And a lot of stuff was last minute, but I'm I'm grateful because, you know, I'm working with a limited team. It was pretty much me. And then I had my, my uh, girlfriend at the time, you know, she was helping out as much as she could. But yeah, it was very difficult because we, we don't really know too much about this film stuff, but we, we got it done, man. We, so we did. What was, what was difficult uh, about it, right? Like, I, your first film, I get it. Everything's going to be difficult. But what did you find, like, the most challenging? Being that you're going from a space where, you know, you're unfamiliar with everything and you dive right into it. What did you find to be the most challenging for you? I mean, I feel like it's kind of obvious for most people, like, the, the money. And I hate to say it, but it's the it's the money, man, funding. Because I, I had an investor and dude backed, up, backed out on me last minute, bruh. Dude backed out on me last minute. And, you know, it was hard, but it was like, you know what? I'm going to have to figure this out because I don't have X amount of dollars, but I'm going to figure this out. Yeah. I'm going to figure this out. So it was definitely money. Um, we we end up getting that taken care of with help from uh, family members. And then myself, I had to fund my film myself, of course. And uh, But the next thing I would say is like finding locations, Finding a hospital, finding a place that looks like a hospital, a real legit hospital is very difficult. But we ended up getting, we, we reached out to this urgent care, a 24 hour like urgent care center. And they said, yes, we were getting so many no's and we got a real hospital. Uh, I'm so grateful for, uh, to them uh, for that. That was the most difficult thing to do. We, we got somebody to say yes to us because, you know, it's a lot of, a lot of paperwork and laws and stuff like that. But the president of that company, I'm so grateful for them because we want to make the film look real and legit. Because if you look at a lot of Tubi films, when they have hospital scenes, okay, that's in somebody's bedroom. It's like obvious that's a bedroom right there. So I want to make something legit. Um, all the other locations, we got them pretty good. Uh, after that, I would say it's communication. <laughs> My communication is so bad because not only am I writing the film, directing the film, acting in the film, I'm also being the person. I'm the person that's bringing food to the to the uh, to the uh, to the set. Um, I'm making sure I'm, I'm having to coordinate and schedule everybody's schedules, and uh, it's just so much. I'm just all over the place. So I, I made so many mistakes, and I confused a lot of people because I was doing so much all by myself at one time. You know. Uh, so yeah, I was, I, 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 I know for sure moving forward, I'll have to delegation. Have more, yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna have more people <laughs> on my team, so I don't have to worry about that, you know, but no, I mean, yeah. that's, that's one of the biggest things that you learn, uh, as you, as you make films and it's a tough thing. It's a tough thing for me is the trust in the delegation, right? Because what happens is. When you wear so many hats and you're used to a certain level of quality and you don't have the, the resources to get A plus talent, right? And we're talking cinematographers, we're talking uh, colorists and sound design and all that stuff, that you tend to have to wear a lot of hats because no one's going to put the love into that project the way that you will, right? Even, uh if, even if it doesn't look Hollywood quality and it's 2B quality. <laughs> If you're, if you have limited resources, you're going to make it look the best that you can make it. Yep. Yep. So, yep. okay. So you're starring in your projects, you're writing it, directing it. What was it like starring in your own project? Because I always applaud, um, actors who create their own opportunities. It's, it's such a, a jump and, and a risk <laughs> in, in and taking destiny into your own hands to give yourself that opportunity. What was that like for you? It was very intimidating. I'll say that because making a jump from, you know, my film, The Giver to this, I was like, man, I'm, I'm, I'm in acting classes and stuff like that. I'm like, bro, I, I really got to make sure I give a great performance, a good performance and something that people 
you know, can feel and be proud of, you know what I'm saying, outside of myself, because I'm hard on myself. And, but uh, I just wanted to, I, that, I, I just want to really make sure I give a, a great performance acting, you know, and stuff like that. So uh, that was the biggest thing for me is, was my performance. Uh, it was intimidating so much. Like the, I have a lot of, I have a few scenes where I have to be emotional. And I was like, man. Are you able to cry like, on cue? There's this one particular scene where I really, I went in and I got a lot of people talking about, like coming back to me about this particular scene. I don't know if you've seen it yet, but there's one particular scene. Once you watch the movie, you'll know exactly what, what scene I'm talking about that really got people. So you are, so you are as an actor, you are able to cry on cue. I am, I would say I am. I, I would say I am. It just depends on my preparation and stuff like that. But I would say cry on cue, nah. Hey, I'm just saying, because anybody that can cry on cue, I give you an A plus because someone like me, if you see me cry on camera, let me tell you, two seconds before action, I cut onions like a centimeter from my eye. And as soon as I can feel the swelling happening, I'm like, action. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey man whatever works <laughs> and you know what once i throw that music score on it don't nobody know because you know so i tried i had a friend of mine he's a he's another uh good actor his name is chris dion and uh he was like hey man you need to try these cry sticks because i knew in one of my films i had to cry right kind of like yourself and i tried this first i tried vaseline that didn't work then I tried these cry sticks and you, you kind of wipe them right at your, at your cheek under your eye. That didn't work. And I was like, man, what's going on? So he tried it and he started crying. I was like, okay, well, clearly I'm just not affected by it like you are. Then I went and I cut the onions and I was like, oh, this is it. This is it. Yeah. So now I got my secret sauce. Now y'all know my secret sauce. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. So, okay. So you got it. You're acting in it. You're directing. You're doing all of this stuff. Do you find that like that switch that has to happen when you have to go behind the camera compared to being in front of the camera? Man, it's quick. It's quick for me. Like I'm in and out. Like as soon as we, you know, we cut, I'm like, all right, cool. Like, you know, I'm, I'm quick. I'm back and forth, you know? So it's not really an adjustment for me. Cause like me, when I'm in work mode, I'm super focused and I'm just, I'm just in my, I'm in my mode. You know what I'm saying? So it's, I wouldn't even say it's like a switch. I'm still like, it's all the same for me. You yeah. know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm, I'm in it. I'm in it. As an actor, do you find that, uh, you understand your story that you wrote so much better than like when you get sides or when you work on other projects, it's so vastly different, right? Yeah, absolutely, man. And I'm just like, I'm at the point that I don't even submit myself for other roles anymore. Cause it's like, man, they can say no, or, they can say no to me if I submit for this role. But if I write my own project, they not going to say no. And then I'm going to understand what I'm writing more anyways. Cause I feel it more anyways you know but i do like the challenge of you know taking on somebody else's work and like embodying that because it's still a challenge that's you know showing my range as an actor as well to be able to adapt to somebody else's script versus my own so i do i do enjoy that but yeah so what did you guys shoot that project on uh red camera Ooh, what kind of red i don't know about all that but i know it's a red camera <laughs> Hey man, you know, the thing about red is they have such um, great color science because they shoot mm -hmm. in 16 bit and, mm. and it's, it's definitely noticeable. I know that because on, um, on our fourth film, we shot with the red Komodo. It was a small box camera. Mm. Um, and that color science is so good. I just, I just had to, I switched camera systems back to black magic just for the usability, but the red is a definitely a good system. It gives you that, that cinematic color. Yeah, yeah. What did you yeah. What did you find was like the most um, enjoyable part for you with this project? Filming with family, mm -hmm. like having my like just having my family, being able to get my family in the film. Uh, I have I ain't gonna talk about that, but anyways, having family in the film was something I'm very proud of. Do you feel I'm like so it brought you guys closer? Yes, for sure. I, I think so, for sure, because they had never been in a movie before and uh, certain scenes that I put together and having p certain people in the scenes, it meant a lot, you know, because of, you know, we have cliques in our family, so I put certain cliques, you know, yeah. to, in certain scenes. So, yeah, it was it was dope. It was really, 
awesome. I was really, I'm proud of myself for making it happen. Yeah, you know, absolutely. So, okay, so you're making this project, you finish the film, then what? What's, um, what's your gotta, thought process like, right? Because you know you have to get it out there, but like, then it, what? It's like, well, me, I had to go straight and like, all right, cool. So when we finish start editing, but you know, I gave, uh, you know, my editors and you know, they end up editing to the uh, people that shot it and my crew, it was just two guys. Um, they end up doing post-production for me. So I gave about, about two weeks to a month or something like that to let it breathe. Then we went straight into it because like two, two and a half months later, after we wrapped, we had to get the film ready for the premiere because we already had a date for when we was going to have a premiere. Um, but yeah, man, uh, after we got that done, we had the premiere and then it's like, okay, how do we get this out to the world? I did a lot. I had already been doing a lot of research and watching YouTube videos and stuff. And I came to this uh, distribution company called Indie Rights and I uh, reached out to them. I uh, spoke with Miss Linda uh, through the email and stuff. She was awesome. Uh, very straightforward. I had seen a lot of great reviews from them, submitted my film. And they accepted it. They signed a contract, sent them all that fancy tech stuff that they need <laughs> that I don't did, understand. Did you have to go through a whole list of deliverables? Oh, dude, that was, oh my gosh. I came, I came, I, I, yeah, I'm glad I had the people I had yeah. to make that stuff happen because I did not understand that. Oh my gosh. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a, one thing that filmmakers or indie filmmakers don't know, especially on their first film, when you're going with the distributor is that you have this grand list of de deliverables. And what I did after my second film um, was after I got that list of deliverables and I realized, okay, this is what the industry will ask for. I just templatized it to where every film, I just automatically do those things. So mm -hmm. then whether I go at a distributor or I self distribute or anything, I just already have it ready to go. Yeah. Um, Okay, so you have your crew, they make it, you go with Indie Rights. What what made you choose Indie Rights as your distributor? And then how has it been working with them so far? Yeah, like I said, man, it was just like, so I joined a group on Facebook. Uh, it was like a distributor group, basically talking about different distributors and their experience with them. And I kept seeing their name pop up. And I kept seeing the lady, the lady that's the owner, uh, Linda, Linda Nelson. And I just kept looking at her page and looking at... Um, you know, the feedback from working with them, everybody had some positive. I'd never seen a negative comment. Then I went on YouTube, I was watching her um, hour and a half interviews and stuff. And I was just listening. I'm like, okay, this sounds like somebody I can work with. This sounds like somebody trustworthy. I went on their website. I looked at, you know, how the, the, the structure of the contract and stuff like that. Everything was just so straightforward and it checked out. Everything was consistent. Yeah. So I was like, you know what? I'm finna go with these people right here. How many, you know, how and, many years do they have your movie for? Three years. Oh, okay. So that's not bad, actually. Mm -hmm. That's not bad at all. Three years is like in and out. Yep, yep, yep. Okay. So you checked them out. Everything's good. The, the reason why I'm diving into it so often is because, or so much with you, is because you have experience being that now you're with them. Um, a lot of filmmakers, when they finish their project, they tend to think about distribution last. Mm -hmm. So... You either you have the big top tier distributions that most of us never even get to say hi to, right? Mm -hmm. Then you have the 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 rest of the distribution companies. And unfortunately, in today's world, it sucks that a lot of distributors take advantage of filmmakers. But it sounds like you have had a great experience with indie rights and they actually do good by their people. Yes, absolutely. That yeah, they and she answers back really fast, like the longest that she's taken probably is like a probably two days, but usually it's the same. Oh, sorry. It's probably usually either same day or, uh, or the next day, you know? So it's, yeah, they, I, I love it. I love it. Do you feel like, uh, going with them that you've gotten greater exposure compared to just distributing it yourself? Absolutely. I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I mean, I wouldn't have known what to do yeah. at all. It's probably thrown it up on YouTube or put it on. I don't even know what I would have did, man. So, so, okay. So that, so that's an interesting question, right? Um, so for a lot of indie filmmakers, they have like film hub, right? 
mm-hmm. which is an aggregation company that you kind of put it up, you put your film up there, they distribute it to these platforms, they take 20%, or you can pay for different plans. And mm-hmm. then you have indie rights that's like, hey, we're going to take 20%, and then we're going to do all this stuff. What do you feel like are some of the benefits that you were able to witness going with indie rights? So I, I also you know, researched them as well, and I was just like, you know, I started seeing a lot of, you know, kind of negative comments um, about them because they changed their plan. Um, and like, you have to basically pay like 200 a month to be in contact with somebody. I'm just like, what? 200 a month? You know, just to contact, to have, have them, you know, uh, reach back out to you within a certain amount of time. Like, nah, nah, I need somebody I can talk to like every day and like, you know, and like, I don't really have to pay anything. There's no up upfront payment. Like, I'm already limited. I'm a brand new filmmaker, you know? So I needed clear communication and knowing what I'm getting into. I, I just started hearing too many horror stories about, you know, Film Hub and them kind of changing up what they were doing and stuff like that. So I got. I just needed, I needed communication just, just for me. Yeah, yeah. I definitely got to look into them because I think I'm not for certain, but I thought they still had their free plan. But you do have to pay, I think, to have like a almost like a distribution consultant almost. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. The free yeah. plan, I think you can still submit it, still release it. They'll take 20%, but you get none of the goodies. You don't get release windows. You don't get someone to talk to. You don't get none of that. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So what about like, a, I think Indie Rights, they also have like Facebook groups for filmmakers and stuff like that. What mm-hmm. has that been like? Yeah, so I I just they just sent me because it's private. It's uh f- it's a private Facebook group, but uh that's something I need to. I'm glad you reminded me. I need to reach out uh to some of the filmmakers in there because uh we we have. I just got the film on Amazon Prime not too long ago. So, um they told me I need a certain amount of ratings to get the film on. Like I believe to be selected by Amazon to be on like freebie or something, basically to make the film free so it can reach, you know, more people and stuff like that. Um, so um, I, I, I'm glad you said that. I need to reach on, out man. to the- You gotta be on it, man. I know, but I'm, I'm no, I ain't making no excuses. You're right. You're right, Jason. <laughs> no excuses, man. Well, you know what? The thing is, man, your first film, it's, it's most doubtedly, it's gonna lead to your second film, right? Like. Mm-hmm. Like you, the moment you finish that first film, I think people catch a bug and that Mm -hmm. bug is going to be like, okay, well I can do better next time. Mm -hmm. Right. So learn all your lessons now, you know, learn everything, every mistake, take a mental note everywhere you went wrong, take a mental note because then you can make your second film better Then your third films better Then your fourth film. And then you just keep getting better as a filmmaker. Like the story may not necessarily get better because that's subjective. But Mm -hmm. the quality of what you output will get better because you're better as a filmmaker. Mm -hmm. So what what do you got planned now? Your your movie's out. You're out there hustling, grinding, pushing it out there. What is your next plan? So uh, aside from my other marketing plans and stuff like that, uh, I'm collaborating with a director out in Florida to shoot a six to eight episode uh, college series. Um, series of uh, college series and settings at an HBCU that's going to be very, very R-rated because um, <laughs> you know what goes on in, in college. So we're going to show that. It's, uh, it's so going like to be a drama. is what you're saying. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's going to be more of a dramedy, not, not, too, not too dark. Nah, yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, so uh, I'm really excited about that. And I'm already working on my next film uh, for what it's worth. I'm right now in, and I'm I'm going to take my absolute time with that. So, if it comes out in 2026, it comes out in 2026. So, I'm I'm really taking my time. Like I'm trying to be like the Kendrick Lamar of this filmmaking thing. I'm taking my time. Yeah, yeah the thing is, man, there's no rush. Like, yeah. you get to a certain point where you, in life where you realize like you're only ever competing against yourself, mm-hmm. right? You can, yeah. yeah. Like someone else may be in your shoes. Like, like, think about this. I spoke about this with my, my wife the other day. Um, you'll have like you as an indie filmmaker will, will, will wear 10 hats. Right. And because it's your film, you get paid nothing. And then when it comes out and does, you know, if it doesn't do good, you get nothing. If it does well, Hey, maybe you get some money. Maybe you get a couple thousand dollars. You know, maybe you get a lot more than that. Who knows? 
<laughs> but you could have a producer on a bigger movie send a couple emails, maybe make a couple phone calls, and they get fifty, sixty, eighty, hundred thousand dollars for being a producer on that project. Yeah, that it's not necessarily fair as to people doing the same job, but you're not competing against that person. You're competing against who you were yesterday. Mm, you're right. So yep. like you said, there is no rush on your second project. If it comes out in 2026, the thing that's going to, I think really help you myself and anybody really is mm -hmm. when you make these decisions with these artistic projects, ask yourself, when I look back on this, when I'm 80 years old, am I going to be proud of myself? Yeah. Yep. Yep. Cause how old are you? I'm, I just turned 29. See, yeah, you're still in the twenties, baby. You're still in yeah. the twenties. <laughs> I'm holding on. Hey, 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 30 ain't coming. I'm 29 oh. for the next 15 years. <laughs> okay. So you're working on this college project. Uh, where are you? Are you in Georgia, Florida? Where are you at? Oh, I'm in, I'm in Texas. I'm in Dallas. Fort Worth. Oh, that's, that's right. You know what? Yeah. I've been speaking to so many people. Okay, you're right. So Texas, how is the filmmaking scene out there in Texas? Um, it's 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 on the come up. It's on the come up. They make, it's a lot of projects, indie films, and stuff going on out here. Commercials and stuff out here. So it's Dallas, Dallas, Fort Worth. It's on the come up. It's oh. on the come. Up. Interesting. And do you have an idea as to as to uh? I know you have an idea, but without giving away too much, what is your next film going to be about? I can't tell y'all. I can't. I, I, I can't. I can't tell y'all this one. I'm sorry. I, I'll have it soon. I'm, I, I'll have it soon, but I can't tell y'all. But just know, it's gonna it's gonna hit y'all. It's gonna be something very unique, very unique. Something that hasn't hasn't been done before. Well, you did say you wanted to be the Kendrick Lamar of movies, so that's very unique in and of itself. Yep. Yep. So okay. So we got your first feature out the way. You're a filmmaker, you're an actor, you're a writer now, you're working on your second, you're working on a college project with a uh, filmmaker out in Florida. Like, what is, like, what's your end goal? My end goal is to be a full-time filmmaker. And once that happens where I can like, okay, I'm cool. I can put aside all of my other hustles and stuff to the side and push it off, you know, to other people. Hey, you handle this, you do this. You know what I'm saying? Once, once, once I'm in that mode, I'm I'm going I'm going bananas because I have so many other ideas outside of just making films and stuff. I, I'll tell you, like I'm I'm gonna start a I'm going to start a basketball reality show and a basketball league that's very unique. I'm gonna have a twist with that. It's gonna be very entertaining. It's not gonna take long to blow up. Are you a hooper? Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm a I'm yeah. How tall are you? Six two. Oh, okay, 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 yeah, okay. yeah you 29, you still got the young legs. Just a little bit, just a little bit. <laughs> okay, so you're going to start the basketball reality show? Yes, basketball re reality show and a league. Um, I'm going to do a football, uh, I'm going to do a football reality show and league, and I'm going to do a soccer uh, show and, um, show and league, uh, and what, what, yeah, I'm going to do a lot of stuff. What's making you hold up on that? Because you could do that right now. Money, gotta have the money and the business part. I gotta, I gotta get all the business stuff together, you well, know, maybe, as well. Maybe it's not on the league, but like, if you think about it from like an indie standpoint, right? Mm -hmm. The reality show, you could do that, whether you put them all in the house or whether you're following these players individually, however you decide to structure it. And mm -hmm. then the league itself could be a made up league in Texas. That's it is. Yeah, that's for these players. It's like, you know, because the drama is how they play and then how they act within each other. So you mm -hmm. can literally have like 15 players, you know, in a house or follow 15 players have teams of three. So you got five teams of three or you got three teams of five and they're like full on, you know, team. Like however you structure, you could do that right now. You, you know, more, uh, it's going to take more time because you're right. Finances do speed things up, but mm -hmm. you could literally piece it together almost like one player at a time. Oh yeah, yeah. I already got the people. The people I play with, I got some characters because this is gonna be different from all the other leagues. It's gonna be different. I promise you, it's gonna be different. So, uh, and I'm gonna pay everybody. Everybody's gonna be paid a certain amount per game. Um, and you know, I want to make sure every everybody's getting paid. That's working with me. If you work in concessions, 
you're getting paid. Um, you know, it's going to be a fee to get in. And then also, you know, I have to pay for the, you know, renting the gym and stuff like that. So and rent, it's, it's you need to raise some funds. Yeah. And I'm going to get it. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to get it. Like, I'm not worried at all. All of my plans, everything is going to go into motion. If, if I say it's going to happen, I'm going to make sure it happens. If the, if the good Lord say the same, I'm, I'm going to make it happen. Has that, has that been, uh, a, a big, um, philosophy for you growing up? No, it, it just, this kind of just hit me when I started making my own films and ha building my own, building confidence and believing in myself. That's when my life started to change. So 2022 is when my life changed. What happened in 2022 that made your life change? If it ain't too personal. I started going, like I just literally just believed in myself, wrote my own film. I didn't rely on anybody else. I put myself out there, wrote and directed my own film. It started there, believing in myself. It's interesting what happens when, um, when you decide to just do and stop thinking so much, mm -hmm. right? It's, yeah. it's interesting what you're capable of doing as a human being. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, okay, you got the reality shows, you got them. So essentially you gonna be, you're going to be a busy man. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I don't even know what's the next word past busy if I ain't busy right now. But yeah, I plan on everything, you know, full time, you know, entertainment, man, entertainment. And yeah, I, I got so many other plans not outside of those. Sure. But I'm going to do a lot. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put some money in people's pockets where they can take care of their own family. Like, you, y'all quit y'all job. You hate that job? Quit it. Come over here. Even if you don't want to be in front of the camera, you can you can be a, a a producer or a script supervisor making some, you know, some decent money. I'm putting my family on, my friends on, people that believed in me and supported me. Like, right now, why I, why I ain't really shit, you know what I'm saying? Those are the people that are, that'll be in um, uh, priority. They'll be priority you know, for the opportunities that I come up with. So my goal is to help people feed their families, man. You know, with the opportunity, I'm not put, I'm not giving no handouts. You got to work for this still, but the opportunity, you know, is, is going to be great. So, yeah. What do you feel yep. like is the biggest lesson that you carried over, over from playing basketball to making films? <sighs> Shoot. I mean, you got to work hard for yourself because ain't nobody else going to do it. You gotta, you gotta take the time, like all that time that you spend, the time you have to, I'll put it like this, hard work beats talent when talent fails to work hard. Just like Kevin Durant, Kevin Durant, all of them said, yeah, just, just hard. I know it's cliche, but literally working hard and believing in yourself and not procrastinating, wasting time, you'll be straight, man, for real. That is, you'll be straight. Yeah, that is very uh, solid advice, right? Yeah. There's a lot of, I always say, there's a lot of filmmakers, directors, writers that are way better than I am. Like, I, mm -hmm. I think I'm pretty average across the board in every facet of filmmaking. Um, the difference is, is that my superpower, I have two superpowers. Mm -hmm. And that is laser focus. Like, mm -hmm. I can zone in on one thing, like, like, like granular, just on that one thing. And then it's consistency, mm -hmm. right? So like you, okay, so you started, you made that decision in 2022. Your film just came out now in 2024, right? Yep. It's on all these platforms. So I started making my own films. I, I was in Hollywood in 2006 doing that whole circuit as an actor and stuff, but I actually started making my own films uh, in 2020, right? Mm -hmm. 2019, 2020. Since then, it's 2024, and we're on, we're in post-production on my fifth film. And that's about 70% uh, done in post-production. And I have two scripts already completed for the next couple of films, but then I'm also going to work on another script that we can shoot quicker um, because of the concept. So am I the best cinematographer, director? No. Am I the best colorist, sound design? No. Am I the best storyteller? No. But what I am going to do is tell stories from my perspective that I think are entertaining and I'm going to consistently get you a, a certain level of quality with every project. So to your point, when you work hard, it beats talent when talent doesn't work hard because when you're at zero and someone that's talented is at five, if they don't work hard, they just stay at five. Yep. But if you continue to work hard, you can get to 10. Yep. So to your point, 
you you mix that in with the, the working hard is mixed in with that consistency that really makes a difference in anyone's life really mm -hmm. that's a good point man so what would you want like where do you want people to watch a movie what plat don't say any platform because we know different platforms pay differently yeah. so what platform would you want people to watch a movie and then coming from the filmmaker himself what would you want the audience to take away from your project Okay, I'm going to answer your second question first. Okay. What I want people to take from... Uh, so the theme of the project is uh, love, regret, redemption, and uh, love, regret, redemption, and yeah, main, mainly those three. So basically, whatever your circumstance is, man, you can get through that circumstance. You can get through it. There's always light at the end of the tunnel, like whatever you're going through. And I mean, whatever it is that you're going through, there is light at the end of that tunnel, uh, tunnel. And things, things don't, things, things don't always have to be dark. You know what I'm saying? They not always going to be dark. It's only going to be dark. If you let it, their circumstances, what you make it and what you allow it to be. So put in the work to tr to try and get it through whatever situation it is, you know, just don't sit and sulk in it. You know, I know I, I'm, and I'm, and I'm not saying this, you know, as somebody that hasn't been through anything, cause I've been through a lot. I'm saying this as somebody, you know, with the experience, put in the work, like whether it's going to therapy, whether it's reading a book, whether it's listening to music, cleaning, whatever it is, put in the work to, 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 to get better. Cause there's always light at the end of the, in, end of the tunnel and you, you gonna get through that situation, whatever it is, no matter how bad it is, uh, for your, your first question, um, you said, huh? What platform do you want people to watch a movie on? But you said, don't say a platform. No, no. I said, don't say all platforms. Oh, oh, oh yeah. What platform, man? Cause I'm gonna tell you. To be paid the most right now, Amazon Prime pay like 0 0.001 cent for every like hour watch or something crazy. So just throwing it out there. I'm going to put it like this, man. If I could become Mr. Tubi and make a whole bunch of Tubi originals where I'm not being paid a flat fee per film, where I'm sharing revenue as soon as the film, you know, puts out, I fund my own film. You know, I still have ownership of my film and we split in revenue. Y'all just have it up here on the you know, on the recommended or whatever as a Tubi original and we split in profits, I would love to do that. I'd be cool with being Mr. Tubi. I, I would love my nickname to be Mr. Tubi. I think Tubi originals, I think they pay the flat fee and then they own it for like seven years or or something like that. I don't know the exact details of it. Yeah, but that's the thing. That's the only way I would do a Tubi original is if we do a, a split. Like instead of you paying a flat fee, I would have to, like, I would have to go in, you know, and talk to them through meetings and stuff like that. Hey, I, I want to do this. This is what I'm offering. I can fund my own films, but we have to do a revenue split. I don't want to be, I don't want you to own my film. I, I'm going to come in on my own terms and we can negotiate from there, but I'm not doing a flat fee. Nobody's taking my film ever. Nobody's taking my film. I didn't hear too many horror stories. So see, that's, that's the, that's the, I would say that's the pride of the artist, right? Uh, mm -hmm. For me, it depends on what that flat fee is. I'm like, okay, what are we talking? Are we talking three hundred thousand? Because for but at at the end of the day, though, with that, it, whatever the fee is, yeah. say they give you that three hundred thousand, yeah. you don't think they gonna make three million off oh, your movie? One hundred percent, and that's and so, that's where the, that's where the difference comes in, right? Exactly, because that three hundred thousand after taxes and then splits with your distribution, that money gone. You know what I'm saying? 100%. So for me. I'm like, I want, I want the residuals. I love when that money keeps coming in and coming in and coming in and coming in. The business, they, they know what they're doing. They gonna make their money, no matter how much they give you. Sure. So I'm like, no, nah, I'm trying to eat too. Well, you I'm know why? The difference is, is that the placement, right? So as a Tubi original, they're gonna push that on the front page, yeah. right? And they're getting paid from ads. So mm -hmm. it doesn't matter what they pay you. They can just put it on that front page as a Tubi original until it makes its money back. Yep, and they gonna eat. They gonna eat. And I, like I said, I want. I'm, I want to eat too. So, however it works, I, I, I plan on. That's my goal is to be Mr. Tubi, and I'm, I'm gonna figure out a way to make it happen. If it doesn't happen, hey, at least I tried. But if I had a second option, I would say like a, a like a Hulu. I would say a Hulu for sure. 
Yeah. 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 I would do I would do some on Hulu. I would have to do like more research, but I'm not I'm not gonna be too crazy about like Netflix or anything. Well it's fascinating because what happens with these other bigger platforms is they don't even allow you to contact them. Right? Like yeah. you can't even find like you can go on LinkedIn or wherever and try to find these people. You are not messaging them at all. Nope. <laughs> nope. So so all of those contacts uh, for those bigger platforms like the Netflix, the Hulu, the HBOs, you have to almost know somebody that knows somebody there that you can be like, hey, check out my project. Or you mm-hmm. have to get lucky enough to where like Sundance is screening it and it's like a their, their love child and they're like, hey, we love this project. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that's where my distributor would come in. So I'm kind of, you know, I'm making sure I'm building trust with them and building confidence within them for them to be able to reach out to like a company like, Hey, we have this project that we're really proud of. And, you know, cause they have a lot of different big contacts and stuff like that. So I will just want to continue making great films that they'll be proud of to, you know, and confident enough in to reach out to their bigger contact over here at Hulu or, a, you know, the big head at Tubi or something like that that could possibly, you know, make something happen. So is indie rights, are they able to, uh, are they, do they have the contacts to push your, push your film to, to those bigger platforms? They actually do. They have uh Netflix and, but you have to have, I hate when people say this names. Yeah. Cause we all have, I hate, I hate when people say, Oh, name talent, bro. We all got names, bro. We all have names. I hate cause y- y'all say, Oh, like a, Say like a Michael B. Jordan. No, he has a name, but a G for Mallet. I don't have a name. My name is G for Mallet. That's my name. I might not be as big of a name, but I have a name. You know what I'm saying? And everybody else does. So I, I hate when they say that. But long story short, they they'll only be able to do that if you have like you know bigger stars. Well, it's fascinating that that is the 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 go to because I've heard that a few times with different distributors too. Even like a even a film hub, right? Like I've actually spoken to them and I'm like, hey, do you, do you guys actually do pitch to Netflix and all that stuff? And they're like, yeah, if you have a certain uh, budget with name talent, I was mm-hmm. like, oh, okay. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. it, what's, what's fascinating about that is we can go on Netflix right now and see a large catalog of films with people that we've never heard of before. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Starring in it. And I'm like, okay, so this can't possibly be the only model because then that would mean that every single one of those titles would have to have a name cel- a celebrity that we recognize. Exactly. And that's just not the case. I don't understand. I don't get it. <laughs> I don't get it. What would be like, before I let you go, man, I just, just a couple more questions. What would be one of like the biggest dreams come true for you as a filmmaker? Long story short, I'll say, uh, well, I'll say uh, working with, I love, I love, these people that I'm about to name, working with Michael B. Jordan, Ryan Coogler, J. Cole, and Tyler the Creator, mm-hmm. in some 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 format. Whether for Tyler the Creator, uh, t- for Tyler the Creator, I'm di- I'm helping direct a music video, or I'm, you know, he decides he you know he doing a film or something. I'm helping direct on there. Or I'm acting in a project with them. J. Cole directing a music video, or he's acting in a project, you know. In one of my projects, same thing with Ron Coogler and uh, Michael B. Jordan. You see, I, the, I def- you see the trailer for Sinners? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I can't wait. They did a perfect job not showing too much. Yeah, because I was watching. I was like, man, I don't know. Like, I know somebody that was on it, um, uh-huh. but I was like, man, I don't know what's going on here. And then he explained to me. I was like, oh, okay, okay, I got it, I got it. Yeah, yeah. I heard a little bit about it, but it's... I'm excited for that film. I, since I first heard about it when it was writing it, oh man, I was like, I can't wait for this because that's a that's a duo right there. And and you know what's funny about that is uh, they've they found each other and they kind of have stuck together. And yep. it was it was a perfect recipe because Ryan Coogler was coming up and then Michael B. Jordan already had a name and he had a couple of successes under his belt, so he catapulted Ryan Coogler, who in turn catapulted him. Yeah, yeah. It, it was like a it was like a perfect storm for that pairing, um, yeah. and then you look at what they've done since then. It's mm-hmm. like okay, now they're just kind of collaborating together and elevating each other. I wouldn't be surprised if they had their own production company together. Oh man, yeah, <laughs> yeah, man. I love that so much, man. I, I'm super inspired by them. Super. Well, you can do that in Texas. 
Uh, that's my goal. It's yeah. gonna happen. It's gonna happen. What's the what, you know what I'm say. What's the biggest advice that you would give to a filmmaker that's working on their first project? Do it. Whatever, whatever, whatever your goal is, literally just do it. Like, don't waste no more. Don't waste no more time. Stop wasting time. Stop thinking so much. Stop trying to figure everything out and put everything together. Just go. Whatever steps you need to take, whatever the next step is to get your film out. You know what I'm saying? Do that. So if you already got your casting crew, whatever, whatever, get 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 uh, start figuring out the uh, whatever the next step after that is. Do it. Stop waiting. If you have your film idea, start writing the uh, writing the script out. Just do the work. Just do the work and just go, man. Stop wasting time. Don't waste time, man. One hundred. Don't waste. I'm, I'm 29 and I feel like I feel like. I'm old, and everybody like what you young, blah blah blah. But I feel like I, I feel like I started late. You know what I'm saying? Hey, you got a two year head start on me. I started at 31. <laughs> yeah, so it's like, man, just just don't waste time, man. Don't waste time. This you in a you in a very unique position to, and you're blessed to be doing what you're doing. So don't waste time. Absolutely. I can. I would have never never guessed that I would be making my own films. I would have never guessed that. I thought I was going to be in the NBA or overseas playing basketball. Oh, you but now you, wait, you a hooper like that now? Like you that I'm, good? I ain't trying to brag nothing, man. Like man. You tell me overseas you, is that? If you're trying to see me on the court or you know somebody, if y'all trying to play me, man. If you in Dallas and you trying to hoop. <laughs> well, okay. So, 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 okay. So just do it. That's wonderful advice with, with really every aspect in life. If people want to follow you and see your journey and continue to watch you, where can they do that to get more information on what you're doing as a filmmaker and what you're doing as a human being? Okay, so the platforms that I'm most active on right now is Facebook. Uh, you can find me on Facebook at G for Mallet, D-Z-I-F-A, Mallet, M-A-L-L-E-T. And then Instagram, um, G-I-D-O-8-1, G-I-D-O-81, G-I-D-O-81. Eighty-one. So yeah, just feel free, uh, especially on Facebook or Instagram. Feel free to you know send me a message or a comment on something. I do my best, you know, getting back to people and stuff like that. Uh, my inboxes are full with a lot of people, but I do my best getting back to people. So uh, yeah, I'm constantly you know updating my journey and stuff like that. And yeah, I just want to be an inspiration and just be a blessing to everybody in any way I can and make 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 folks proud. You know. Yeah, absolutely. And what's your film and where can the audience watch it? My film, The Remedy for a Broken Heart, is now streaming for free on Tubi. It's streaming on Amazon Prime. If you have a little 2 $3 to rent it, you want to support me, uh, Google Play and YouTube movies right now. So uh, I'm really proud of that. I'm really proud of that. Make sure you guys go check that out right now. Go spend a couple of dollars on that Amazon T-Bot or go watch it on Tubi support the man mr mallet it's been an absolute pleasure brother thank you so much for joining us on the hyper 2 podcast